All right, so what you're looking at here is um, a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of consumables or um, filler metal for TIG welding. I missed a really good deal on a uh, apparently I missed a really good deal on a Max Star. I think um, I forgot what model it was. Max Star? I don't remember. Anyways, he was telling me about his TIG welder that he sold. So and we went over and he had this cart and this cart had all of these tubes in it. And I said, is that all filler wire? And he says, yeah. And I said, so the guy bought the TIG welding outfit and he didn't buy any of the filler wire? He says, no, I guess didn't want it or for whatever reason he didn't buy it. So I just took a quick look, started to piece through it. And at this point, I had already dumped about $400 on stuff. So as we were winding down near the end there. So I tried to get all this filler wire for 30 bucks. And he told me 50 and was, you know, in the process of convincing me that this was a steal at 50 bucks. That, you know, he was saying these red containers right here, he said, cost uh, 10 bucks a piece or more. And uh, just for the empty containers, the storage containers. And then I was basically able to counter and got him to take 40 bucks for the lot. So 40 bucks is for uh, all of the stuff that's in these tubes from here to here so some of these tubes are just ABS plumbing that have caps glued on one end and a clean out glued on the other end so they're homemade uh, storage for filler wire and they're kind of a pain in the butt to have to unscrew these like this and everything but they do the job just fine but it's kind of funny when I look at how many of these are here and I think about how much money it costs. It would cost me to go and buy all of this ABS pipe and all of these fittings because the fittings are where they get you, right? But, so the problem with this stuff is that a lot of these are unmarked, so I don't know what they are. And I know that a lot of it, like this for instance, I could see this is aluminum. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I have a TIG welder that's capable of doing AC. So, I can TIG weld aluminum. But yeah, so I mean, there's no nothing marking that one. So let me just try and sort these real quick. All right, so these four holders here are the ones that feel like they're almost empty. Is This one's only got a couple little pieces of aluminum un unmarked. This looks like silicon bronze, maybe. A couple short pieces. This one is marked ER70, ER70S-6. These are all full length, small diameter. Uh, and this one is marked just bronze, short little piece. So not much there. Here's the four remaining uh, homemade holders, ABS holders. This actually appears, it's that thin little flat stock that looks like the stuff you get with a, a gas torch set. So I think maybe not all of this is TIG filler wire after all. This one's marked uh, 308SS for stainless steel. It's got a tube with some small diameter, 1 16th inch ER308L. And then it's got some larger uh, pieces in here, larger diameter pieces that also appear to be stainless. And then these two tubes both have unidentified. This actually feels like aluminum. This, I don't know, might be an aluminum alloy. Don't know. I don't know what to do with mystery wire like that. Mystery metal. Well, here's some pretty much sure things. We know we'll be able to identify what all this stuff is. Here's some ER70S2, uh, Radnor brand. Here's some ER4043, ER5356. These are both weld coat brand made in China. Here's another weld coat, ER702S. This one is a uh, marked Old Harris ER7052. And there's a lot of it in there. Silicon bronze, ER5356. And then a box that's still about a third full of uh, 
of Harris brand uh, ER70S-2 mild steel TIG. Well, that's definitely usable. This tube's empty. This tube is marked uh, ER308-308L, 330 seconds of an inch. A decent amount left in that one. This tube appears to have lost its label, and that certainly looks like aluminum. This guy here is really full. You can tell by the weight. This is 330 seconds uh, ER70S6. Another one that feels really full, and it's ER309, eighth inch. That feels like that feels like stainless. This one also feels pretty full and is uh, unmarked. And that looks like more mild steel coated. It's a homemade PVC one that's empty. Another homemade PVC one that's empty. And then all that's left is this mystery PVC one. Looks like that's the end that was glued on. I'll stand corrected. Well, I'm not going to bother trying to open it, but this is pretty, you know, got quite a bit left in it still. And it's marked 330 seconds, 5356. Oh, I did get it open. See how much is left in there. All right, let's move indoors. It's getting too dark. Along with all those welding supplies, fill and metal, I was able to get him to throw in this uh, box, which is got some of these El Cheapo flap discs in it. That's just a uh, flap disc. This is Warrior. I'm pretty sure this is um, this is all Harbor Freight brand stuff. So these are 60 grit flap discs. Oh, these are branded Stark. I don't know who makes those. Oh, there's some other stuff in here mixed in. Flap discs. Cutoff wheels. Blackhawk brand cutoff wheels. Cut off discs, cut off discs, and grinding. There's a rigid brand, <laughs> these are used. Well, anyways, these are pretty much thrown in for free. And then I also got, I think it was 15 or 20 bucks, I got all of these. Electrodes, TIG electrodes. Um, these are 2% thoriated tungsten. And then there's a lot. Uh, there's some of these pure tungsten electrodes. 2% thoriated, 2% lanthanated. Lanthanated, thoriated, thoriated. That doesn't belong in there. Lanthanated, and then these these in this box here. These are all pure tungsten, pure tungsten, pure tungsten. There's a lonely Radnor. I don't know that one's all alone. Seriated. That was a good deal. So earlier on in our wheeling and dealing, I came across one box of gauge pins that was incomplete. And then near the end, in a completely different area of the building, there was a pallet with a bunch of junk on it. And there were not one, not two, but three more boxes for gauge pins. And also, so these are all kind of uh, a hodgepodge of gauge pins, but I ended up paying like five bucks a box for these or some ridiculously low amount. 
So this is uh, this has got quite a few pins still present in it, but they're just uh, you know they're in, they're in kind of rough shape. I would describe these as still uh, usable as uh, I don't know your uh, your winter beater pins, your uh, your daily drivers. I don't know what you want to call them. When you just want to use something for a quick check and you don't want to pull out your pristine gauge pins. I couldn't let them just get thrown out. That's probably where they were headed next. This is, I think, the first one I bought. The color of the box is a little bit different. Can't quite make out what the label is. And again, you know, there's some in there. These are a little bit nicer because these are actually marked with the sizes on them. That's a .242. Actually in better shape, too. So these might have actually started out life as a, a, a name brand. Whereas those other ones I just showed you, those look like they just had the uh, sizes marked on them with Sharpies. .290 to 500. That would be nice if that's what was in there, full set. But instead, again, we got just kind of like these... Well, these are marked, though. Oh yeah, that's .478. That's clearly marked like laser etched or whatever you want to call it in a way that would indicate that, no, these are not just some kind of homemade deal. The piece of tape on the inside says check before use. Yeah, I'll say. 250 to 500. You know, kind of, kind of quite a few here, you know. So, I don't know. These also appear to be commercially made. And the thing is, I, I think my larger set stops at 260, so I don't have any pins above that size. So might be worth me going through and actually seeing if I can't cobble together a decent uh, set and keep it in one of these boxes. All right, guys, back to the machinist tools from this haul. Let's uh. Let's start with this box. Ah, stamp set, early one. The heavy duty Markwright alloy steel stamps made in the USA. Greenfield, Massachusetts, the Greenfield Steel Stamp Corporation. Hmm, that's a kind of neat old set. I'm not going to go through it, but I mean the fact that they're all filled makes me think, and there's actually four extras in there for whatever reason, makes me think that's probably a complete letter set. Oh, we've got an old version of, judging from the size, this is probably not a machinery's handbook. This is probably the machinist's handbook, the, uh, the early competitor to the machinery handbook that uh, went out of print. Yes, this is the American Machinist's Handbook. So this is a different animal. It's in rough shape, but a lot of these were rough because uh, they were earlier. Let's see if we can't get a date on this thing. But, so there you go. So that's, that's the American Machinist's Handbook. I don't know how long these were in print, but I can tell you that this particular one is dated 1940. So that's, that's a real blast from the past. Unfortunately, the binding uh, cover's in really rough shape. Binding's still intact, so the pages aren't all falling out, which is good. Has a lot of the same information you would find in the uh, machinery handbook. But I think there are some differences. I have heard of cases of guys having both. Um, so I think I already have a copy of this. So I'll probably end up being able to pass that on to somebody. What do we have here? Ah, this is a uh, cheap micrometer, digital micrometer. Actually still got a battery in it. How do you like that? And it seems to work perfectly fine. Good carbide faces on it. Um, you know, this is a cheap no-name Chinese, but the reality is... That it's almost identical to the uh, 
to the Fowler ones that I've seen. Case feels a little, maybe a little bit chintzier than, than the Fowler. The type of plastic. Anyways, that'll be a good cheap digital micrometer for somebody. Pinnacle. Oh yeah, yeah. I got this for like five bucks because uh, we figured that it may it might be missing some pieces. So I'm probably gonna check that out now. But this is a uh, interchangeable steel type uh, stamp. So the idea is you got this holder here, okay? Prior, P R Y O R, Sheffield, made in England. And what this does, it's got a little set screw there so you can clamp these in and hold them all in there together. Well, I think if we just loosen this set screw. Ah, so close. We're missing one P and one R. It's supposed to be three R's in this set, so we still have two R's, which is good. But the P, uh, there's supposed to be two P's and there's only one P and that's unfortunate because you can't be happy with only one P. <laughs> Get it? Oh, let's see what else we got here. Her. Made in China. Right there. Oh, yeah. Mark of quality. Indicator holder. Mill. Oh, pretty. Look at that. Got the old Noga style ripoff. And it actually works. You know, it's funny. I should call this a cheap Noga ripoff. But the reality is this right here is metal on this Chinese thing. And on my new Noga, it's plastic. Nice little holder. Nice. Brown and sharps. Six inch. The problem is it's missing the uh, crystal. And if you listen, they sound sick. But the good news is the reason why they sound like that is actually because of the face is loose and I think if this little retaining ring is pushed in correctly when the new crystals in there I think that that will actually solve that problem because it gets a lot better if you hold it very level so that that can sit down lower whereas if you turn it upside down let that thing just hang actually it sounds okay anyways So, the funny thing is, this is obviously not the correct case for this. Um, it's got a battery still in there. These were for some cheap digital calipers. But, better than no case at all. And, uh, it's funny how fate can intervene. The um, load that I just picked up recently, which is going to be the next series after this one, uh, the reason why I went down was because the guy had these brown and sharp dial calipers, supposedly. The pictures weren't really good. And when I got there, what he had was he had a brown and sharp case with Minotoyo calipers in it. So the beauty here is I'm going to be able to put these in a genuine brown and sharp case. And I'm going to be able to put the Minotoyos in this cheap case for protection during shipping.